everything changes. How's it going everybody, Jared here, and today we're gonna to be looking at the new, the improved Firebase. Basically, Google I.O. happened a couple days ago and they are renovating the crap out of Firebase in which it's supposed to be a parse alternative. So if you liked parse, you're going to like Firebase is basically what their plan is. Now, I am super happy about this update because I wasn't liking Firebase, yet it was like the best option for me. So I'm glad they're completely renovating this in which it's supposed to be a lot easier for people to use. But either way, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to do email and password login in Firebase. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead, open up Safari, and we're gonna go over to firebase.google.com. So go ahead, type that all in. Link will be in the description down below. And it's gonna take you over to their main homepage right here, and it should say app success made simple and this get started for free. So if you haven't already signed up with an account, go ahead, click on that button. If you already have an account, you can go ahead and click on console, or you can also click get started for free and it'll take you over to the same place. And then here we are, we can go ahead and say create new project Project, and this is where you have your project name. So in this case, I'm just gonna call this user login and then go ahead, create the project. And it's gonna take you over to this page right here. So inside of here, you have this add Firebase to your iOS app. So go ahead, click on that. And inside of here, it wants your iOS bundle ID. And also this is an optional one, but your app store ID. In this case, we're just sticking with the bundle identifier since we don't have it uploaded to the app store uh, since we're just getting this started. So let's go ahead, go over to Xcode and create our new project so that we can actually grab that bundle identifier. So we're gonna say create new project, single view application, go ahead, click next. Product name, I'm just gonna call this my user login. It is important to note the product name because it does affect your bundle identifier right here. And also your organization name and identifier also affects the bundle identifier as well. So be sure to keep those in mind and make sure you know what your bundle identifier is so that you have it properly done. And then here we are, language Swift, devices universal, go ahead, click next and create. And then here we are with our project. Now we know our bundle identifier, so we can just go ahead, either copy and paste that, or you can type it all in. And I'm just gonna go right back over here and go to the iOS bundle ID and just type that in. Then we go ahead, say add app. And then here it's gonna download a file for you. This is your Google service dash info dot P list. Uh, this is gonna be the one right there. So we can go ahead, click and drag that right over to our application. And then we also wanna say copy items if needed, user login, all that stuff, just in case that file somehow moves. We don't want that file to move, otherwise the thing will not work properly. So there's our Google service P list. It's basically what we need to get Firebase up and running within our application, so it's very important. Now let's go back over here and we can just go ahead, say continue. And then here we have step three, which is going to be install the pod. Now, if you haven't heard of CocoaPods before, go ahead, go over to CocoaPods.org. And inside of here, this is essentially what CocoaPods is. It's something that actually allows you to build and run frameworks inside of your application a lot easier. And that's why Google likes using it. So that's what we're going to be using in this case. So just go ahead, if you haven't already installed it, just go back over here. We can go to the terminal. And then in order to install it, you just want to copy and paste this part, not the little dollar sign right there. Just copy and paste that first part. And then you can install CocoaPods inside of your system. I already have it installed, so I'm just going to skip that process. And then this is where we start. So now inside of Terminal, we need to find our project files. So I'm going to say ls to see where we are. And then cd desktop. And then now we're inside of the desktop, so ls. And then we're going to go cd. And this is going to be my user login. LS. And as you can see, we have our user login.xcode project right here. And you want to make sure that you're inside of this project directory with the Xcode project. Otherwise, this won't work properly. So you just need to say pod in it. And then this is going to put a pod file inside of that that's going to work alongside our Xcode project. And then with this pile that's created, we can go over to our user login project right here. And this is the pod file. Now we can go ahead, just go ahead and edit this pod file. We're going to delete these two targets right down here. And we're just gonna keep this top target. And we're just going to say pod, single quotation marks right around that. And we're going to put in Firebase. And then also because we're specifically working with user login, we need to go ahead and say pod, and this is going to be a specific pod file. So we're gonna say Firebase slash auth. So that is exactly what we wanted. We want pod Firebase and pod Firebase slash auth. So that's going to allow us to put authorization or user login via Google, Twitter, Facebook, and also just creating a password in general. That's going to allow that to be put inside of our application. So let's go ahead, command S to save that pod file. Then we can close it. Let's head back over to our terminal. And then we should say LS. 
And now you can see that there's this pod file right in here. And now we just need to say pod install. And we should be good to go. And then also while this is going on, you just want to go ahead and click out of your Xcode project because that Xcode project will no longer work properly because it turns it into an Xcode workspace. So that's why we're not in that specific Xcode project anymore. We're going to be working within the workspace from now on. So there you have it. Once that is all completed, you should have it. So it says pod installation complete. There are two dependencies for the pod file and eight total pods installed. So we're good to go. And then now back with our file over here with our user login file. Now you'll see that this user login.xc workspace has been created. So we just need to go ahead, double click on that. And now this is where we're going to work with our project from now on. So there's our project. So let's head back over to Firebase and we're going to say continue. And then we want to switch this over to Swift. And this is what it wants us to do. So let's go over here to our user login. We're going to go to the app delegate.swift and we're going to say import Firebase. And then right down here inside of our did finish launching with options, the first one that's there, we're going to say capital F I R A lowercase pp dot configure. So now it's going to configure our app for Firebase. So let's go ahead and say finish and we're good to go. So as you can see inside of firebase.google.com, there's all these sections in order to use authorization, database storage, all that stuff. We can just go ahead, click on auth right there. And then right over here, we're going to go over to this tab that says our sign in method. And in here, this is where you're going to enable your various types of logging in. Like you can see, you can log in with GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, Google, and email slash password. I'm just going to keep it at my email slash password. So let's keep that enabled like so. So there you have it. We have our email and password authentication enabled. So let's head back over to our project and we're going to go over here to my main dot storyboard. Now in here, this is where we're going to set up our button and our email and password login. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to go down here to my text field. I'm going to click and drag that right in there. And then I'm going to spread that out. And then we're going to just copy and paste that so that we have two of these fields. And then lastly, we just need a button. So I'm going to go ahead, click and drag that button right onto the scene. And I'm going to put this as my login slash create user. And now let's go ahead, set up constraints a little bit. So I'm going to right click or control click and drag from this text field over to my view. I'm going to give it the leading space, trailing space, and I'm going to give it center horizontally, center vertically. And that should be good to go. And then with our other text field right here, I'm just going to right click or control click and drag from to the bottom text field. And I'm going to say vertical spacing. And then I'm also going to give it the trailing space to container margin as well as the leading space to container margin. And then with this last button right here, I'm just going to right click or control click and drag from that, give it some vertical spacing. I'm going to keep the width and the height of this the same. And I'm also just going to center this horizontally with that other text field. And now let's go ahead, build and run this. And then as I built and ran this, there was a problem. This is my problem. It's a Google services info.plist. If you guys ever hit this error, essentially it's just saying that it's not able to find it. Although that's because my thing was named dash two. So I'm just going to delete that dash two, hit enter, and we should be good to go. And now we just need to go ahead and get this to work. So the first thing we need to do, let's head back over to our project. I'm going to open up my assistant editor here, and I'm going to right click or control click and drag from both of these the text fields and name them. So this first one right here is going to be my username. And this other text field right here is going to be my password. Connect. And then lastly, with this button right down here, right click, control click and drag. And we're going to add an action this time. So change your connection type to an action. And the name of this, I'm going to call mine create account. As when we click this button, the first thing we want to happen is when we create the account. And then later on, like if the account has already been created, then we're going to log in. Now I know this isn't the ideal setup for most people. You would normally have like two different pages for creating the user and logging in, as that would account for less error later on. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is because we want this to be quick and simple. Now with this create account right here, the first thing we need to do is just import Firebase. So go ahead, import Firebase. Then we're going to go right down here to our create account and we're going to say capital F I R and this is going to be the auth dot auth dot create user with email. Now with this email, this is going to be equal to our username dot text. Now I know I set up that wrong with our UI text field up here. This should actually be changed to like your email, but I'm not going to change the name right now. So I'm just going to keep it as username.txt, but just to keep in mind, it's your email, not a username. So with this username.txt, we also want to add an exclamation point at the end. And with our password down here, we're going to say password.txt and add an exclamation point as well. And then with our completion, we're going to say open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And this is where we're going to test whether or not there was an error or not. 
So inside of this completion, it's expecting two variables, and this is going to be your user that was actually used, and also the error that it has occurred. And then after this, you just type in in, and you should be good to go. So with these variables that we just did, we're really only gonna be focusing on the error one, but with these variables that we did, we're gonna say if error is not equal to nil, meaning that there was an error that occurred. So this error that occurs could happen for multiple reasons, whether or not like the person, the account is already created, or whether or not they typed in their email address properly, something like that. So what we're mainly gonna test here is whether or not the account has already been created. And in that case, if the error is not equal to nil, this is where the account has already been created. So this is where we're gonna add a new function called login. So we're gonna say func login, open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And inside of here, this is where we're going to say capital F-I-R auth dot auth dot sign in with email. And we're going to sign in with the email that we tried using in the past. So this is going to be my username dot text, exclamation point, and then our password is going to be our password dot text as well. And then when completion, this is going to be the exact same scenario. So we're gonna say user, comma, and then error, and then just in. So in this case, when the account, everything is set up, we're just gonna say print, huzzah. Now with the error that occurs right here, that means your password or email is incorrect. So we wanna tell that to the user in some way, shape or form. You would normally use like a little error message that pops up. I'm just gonna keep it at print. This is only for us developers. We would only see print, but you would implement your own way of uh, letting the person know that they entered their password or email incorrectly. Now with this create user with email right here, we want this if statement and this else statement right here. Now with this else statement right here, this means everything went smoothly and we can just say print and this will be user created. And then also inside of this else statement, we would want to log in. So I'm just gonna call login from there. And it looks like it wants a self right in front of that. So say self.login. Now, if there's an error that occurs right up here, that means the account has already been found or the account is completely wrong. So in this case, we're just gonna say self.login because this is really letting us know that uh, the account has been found or not, and this is going to let us know whether or not that actually passed as an email that's inside of our system or not. So there you have it, that's how you would create an account and log in. Let's go ahead and see if this works. Now with this bottom text right here, uh, because that is a password, you normally don't wanna show that to the entire users. So you can actually head back over to your project, click on the bottom text field and say it's secure text entry. And now if we were to build and run this, we should be able to see that it's just gonna be a bunch of dots rather than text. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in architect at gmail.com and then my password is going to be my password. And then we can go ahead and say login slash create user. And we should be able to see that the user is created and the user has been logged in. Now, if we were to type in something wrong, we can say, just say architap, then login slash create user. It's going to say something is incorrect. So there you have it. That's how you would enable email slash password user login using Firebase. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more Firebase tutorials slash tutorials in general, be sure to subscribe. App of the day is going to be App Shacks. Now it's essentially a social media place where people can share uh, apps either they've liked or apps that they've uh, personally created. So if you want to check it out, be sure to go check it out in the description down below. I thought you guys might like this one. I well, I like it. It's cool. But anyway, that's it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.